These guys, these properties are things you can quote, okay? Uh, they're quotable results, so they're really, really important. They've got to be kind of like part of the fabric of your mind. Because when you are going to be given inequality, these are kind of your background, right? Right. How do we use them? Okay, so here, different subheading. If you get given an inequality question, or you're in an induction question, and an inequality appears and you have to somehow work with it. You've got three choices. So number one is just start with one of these properties. You know how in binomial theory we were just looking at um, binomial identities, right? And I said to you, frequently, the first line you'll write down is just some version of the binomial theorem, right? You'll write down, oh, this guy is just the sum from 0 to n of what? N, C, R of? You, you can say it in a couple of different ways. I'd probably say X to the R, right? So it's like, and uh, I, I knew what was going on in my head. Okay, so this might be your starting line. And then you say, oh, okay, for a particular value of X, or what happens if I square the whole thing, or whatever, okay? In exactly the same way, any one of these things like say, this guy, or this guy, or this guy, they might be the first line you write, and then you go from there to try and work towards whatever result they want you to prove. So there's number one, okay? Number two, you can prove by contradiction. So we haven't looked at this very much. I'm gonna give you an example of this one. Prove by contradiction is you get given a result, you just assume it's wrong. <laughs> assume the opposite is the case. And then if you work with it and apply logic, you should come up with something which is clearly false according to these properties that you know, right? Maybe you get to some point and you're like, oh, I factorize after starting with this wrong assumption, and I have a square, but apparently according to the inequality I started with, that square should be negative. But that contradicts a known property, right? So you can start from something that is wrong and then show that it's wrong. Lastly, uh, and this is kind of the most tricky, so I'll do a simple example with you. Um, if what you get oops, is a non-algebraic function somehow hiding in your inequality, okay? So everything you're looking at the board, it's algebra. You've got pronumerals, you combine it with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, okay? All of that is algebra. What's not algebra? A. Trig functions are not algebra. Exponentials are not like as in if um, you've got e to the x rather than x to the whatever, okay? Um, logs are not algebraic. All these kinds of things, if you meet one of them in your inequality, you basically have to use calculus. Okay, you have to use calculus. Now, I will, I will show you exactly how it's going to work, but to give you a bit of a tease, right? Calculus has two parts to it, two sides of the same coin. What's the first part? Differentiation, okay. So for instance, they might want you to prove, okay, I've got some kind of function. I want to show it's always bigger than whatever, okay? Well, you might be able to differentiate, show that it's an increasing function, right? It's like, oh, look, I start from here and I always go up. Therefore, I'm always going to be greater than whatever value I started at, right? So if you know what the function is, you can differentiate it, you can get a gradient function and so on. Uh, what's the other part? Integration. Integration. Yeah. So think for a moment. What kind of problem is integration designed to solve? Area. It's designed to solve an area problem. So if what you get, you might like to draw um, a little diagram like this. If what you get is like a, um, a function of some kind, okay? Since integration is going to tell you area, one of the easy ways to get an inequality out of something like this is to simply say, hey, you know, before we knew what integration was, we had to approximate areas by saying, oh, you know, this area underneath the curve, right? This guy underneath here is what I want. I know that this area under the curve, it has to be less than this trapezium up here. You see that? I'm gonna call this the chord trapezium because this is a chord along my curve, right? It's gonna be less than that. So can you see right there, just off that, that's an inequality, right? You can get an expression for the big trapezium. Then you can integrate to find the area under the curve and say, this is bigger than this. Uh, in just the same way, I could do it in reverse. Suppose I've got the inequality facing the other direction. 
there's a trapezium that is easy to define that's underneath. If I just take the tangent at a particular point in that interval, right? Can you see I've got now here, underneath the tangent, depending on the concavity of my curve, right? Underneath the tangent, I've got a new trapezium, and that trapezium has to be less than the area of the integral. Does that make sense? So again, another inequality for you. So if you see some log curve or a sine or whatever like that, then you know calculus is going to be involved because you can't just monkey around with it just like this.